and welcome to tutorial part 4 on BJTs and today what we're going to discuss in this tutorial is that we're going to discuss about how to use a BJT as a switch or a switching element hmm, BJT is a switch sounds kind of confusing I guess okay see that's quite natural at this stage no worries uh, in order to understand the operation of BGT as a switch, it's uh, quite important for you all to focus on the diagram that I want to draw here, okay? So just kindly bear with me for some time, okay? Now here in this diagram as I'm showing you, this is a BGT as you all can see. By the arrow direction, we can understand that this is an NPN type BGT with this as its base and its emitter terminal is over here and there goes its collector terminal. Okay, that's pretty much done. And now, uh, let's say I construct a circuit using this BJT in the CE mode. Okay, so since it's in the CE mode, we have the emitter terminal grounded. Okay, the collector is connected to a resistance termed as RL. Okay, in series with a source voltage, VCC. Okay, that is done pretty much. Bear with me for some time, please. And there we have a base resistance termed as RB. Okay, so note that in this circuit that I've drawn here in the CE mode, we do not have any kind of base emitter, I mean any kind of you know DC bias voltage across the base emitter terminals. That is a marked difference from the previous diagrams. Okay. I'll tell you why we have, or rather why I did this, okay. But uh, before going into those details, let's just first, uh, you know, let's imagine, you know, okay. First, just uh, imagine that in this uh, uh, circuit, let this end of RBB terminal 1, and in this circuit at terminal 1, we apply an input voltage, okay. According to our will, we just apply an input voltage, okay. So now, when we apply an input voltage over here, a part of this voltage would fall across the base and the emitted terminals and the rest would fall across the load I mean the base resistance RB as we know from uh, you know basic elementary circuit theory so the part of the input voltage that is falling across the base and emitted terminals is obviously measured with respect to the emitted terminal since it is grounded so imagine the condition in which if the base emitter voltage that falls across the base and emitter terminals exceeds 0.7 volts, then, <coughs> excuse me, the emitter junction right here would be forward biased and due to that we would have a finite amount of input base current entering into the transistor through the base terminal. So we have under this case of forward bias of the emitter junction we have a input base current okay that would be obviously greater than zero okay which would be you know of the order of you know few microamperes entering the uh, transistor through its base terminal and now this input base current would trigger majority carriers to flow from the emitter to collector terminals now the majority carriers in this case being the electrons since it's an NPN type transistor now the flow of you know the majority carriers through the I mean, I mean from the emitter to the collector terminal would trigger you know finally a flow of collector current okay a certain amount of uh, current through the collector uh, terminal okay termed as the collector current to flow through this loop as you can see here depicted by the uh, purple arrow okay so therefore when the transistors emitter junction is forward biased with the requisite amount of base to emitter voltage then we would have a certain amount of collector current flowing through this transistor or rather this BJT okay so now uh, during this condition the BJT uh, since its emitter junction is forward biased basically behaves as a closed switch or a short path okay so if I just you know um, 
try and compare the BJT with a closed switch then I would have a diagram that would look somewhat like this okay here are the let's say this is the collector terminal of the BJT this is the load resistance and uh, connected with the DC supply voltage over here okay there is and this one represents the emitter okay now if I just you know take for example the BJT as a closed switch now this is our BJT that represents a closed switch okay it's a closed switch so now in this condition we see that we have a collector current IC flowing through this circuit now the value of IC that flows through this uh, you know circuit is given by the magnitude of the supply voltage divided by the resistance so therefore the amount of collector current that would flow through the transistor under this situation would be VCC by RL. Now this collector current would obviously be of the order of let's say about 500 milliamp milliamps and not you know more than that as that happens in case of conventional transistors and in case of power transistors this could be um, you know few amps okay few amps in case of power transistors okay power BJTs all right so that is uh, so in order to summarize we can say that here we will have a certain amount of collector current flowing through this uh, collector and if, I mean flowing through the BJT and hence through the load resistance okay in this loop as shown by this purple arrow okay and now since here uh, the BJT behaves as a closed switch therefore the voltage ac across its collector and emitter terminals that is VCE would obviously be zero okay since it's a closed path so therefore what we have here is that the collector and emitter voltage across the transistor would be zero volts all right so now it won't be equal to exactly zero volts it would be somewhat approximately equal to zero volts okay so uh, so having said that uh, this is you know a condition where the transistor conducts a certain amount of collector current and if I just term it as condition 1 so then we can say that when the transistor operates under condition 1 it is said to be in the on state like a mechanical switch okay when it conducts a current it's on okay so now if we just imagine another condition in which the voltage falling across the base and emitter terminals you know falls below 0.7 volts okay so if the input signal over here if the input voltage at terminal 1 you know is not sufficient you know in order to uh, create a voltage um, across the base and emitter terminal which would exceed 0.7 volts okay so under that situation what we shall have is that we would have the emitter junction to be reverse biased and as a result we won't have any kind of base current flowing into the transistor and hence we won't have any majority carriers that is electrons flowing from the emitter to the collector itself and therefore we would have in turn no collector current flowing through the uh, transistor and hence the load resistance so under this case as we can see here there is absolutely no collector current I mean first of all it doesn't have any base current flowing through the base terminal so base current is approximately zero and therefore no collector current flowing through the transistor so therefore collector current through the transistor is also approximately zero but in this case as we can see here since the emitter junction is reverse biased the transistor behaves as an open switch if I just try and draw the diagram again then it would look somewhat like this all right so here as we can see that the if we just you know imagine that uh, this uh, transistor you know since it behaves as an open switch here this is the collector and this is the emitter terminals and now let's say if we just imagine this to be our transistor okay so it just behaves as an open switch as shown in this diagram okay so now here as we can see from this diagram that there is no collector current through the circuit 
And as a result, if we just try and measure the voltage across the collector and emitter terminals, that is VCE, now the collector to emitter voltage in this uh, condition is approximately of the order of the supply voltage given to the transistor by this DC voltage connected here. Okay, so therefore the amount of collector to emitter voltage during this case is obviously or rather approximately equal to the supply voltage that is VCC. So under this condition since there is no output current through the transistor okay since there is no collector current through the transistor the transistor I mean the condition 2 represents a condition in which the transistor is said to be operating in the off state that is the transistor doesn't conduct any current as in case of a mechanical switch when it's off it doesn't conduct any current and hence is regarded as in the off state okay so now if I just try and plot these uh, values of IC and VCE on the transistors you know CE output characteristics then we would have a graph that would look somewhat like this let's say we have IC on the collector current on the Y axis and VCE that's the collector to emitter voltage on the X axis and this is basically how a CE output characteristics of a PJT looks like now for condition 1 we have VCE versus IC as 0 comma VCC by RL as the two points which we need to plot let's say we plot uh, let's say this point on the current axis represents VCC by RL and since VCE is 0 already so there we go we have our first plot right on the Y axis as shown over here and now for condition 2 we have VCE versus IC as VCC comma 0 so let's say uh, on the X axis we plot VC E as VCC okay having the value of the supply voltage okay and since collector current is zero so it's basically the plot is on the y-axis so there we go we have this plot as VCC comma zero so therefore we can see here that while in condition one the transistor operates in its saturation region and while in condition two the BJT operates in its cutoff region okay as discussed in our previous tutorial so therefore we can mention this fact over here in order to summarize that in condition 1 the BJT operates in the saturation region all right and while in condition 2 the BJT operates in its cutoff region okay so now uh, such type of applications of the BJT uh, being used as a switch is also you know quite common in digital and computer circuits so while it's uh, used in uh, computer circuits there are generally uh, what we have there is certain input pulses and applied to this base terminal in order to switch the transistor on and off okay so if we just imagine a case where we have an input pulse at the uh, base terminal of the transistor then uh, corresponding to that we would have a collector current that would you know take some time to rise and fall and have a certain waveform that would uh, be of uh, such a structure that I've shown here which is IC okay let me just name it this way okay there is IC taken with respect to time okay so if I just try and comparing this input pulse okay this is our input pulse having a time period of let's say t seconds so if I just try and compare uh, these two then we shall see here that let's say if we have an input pulse over here of the time period let's say t seconds then we would have a collector current that would uh, look somewhat like this now we see that there is a finite delay over here and also the collector current takes some time to rise okay corresponding to the input pulse voltage and again at the end uh, we have certain time taken by the collector current to fall from its peak value that is VCC by RL okay up to zero volts so therefore we see here that there is a delay time TD and a rise time TR 
and over here when the pulse ends the collector current begins to flow I mean the collector current still flows that is the storage time and when the collector current falls to zero that's the fall time so what we have here is starting from this end this is represents the on time denoted by t on which is roughly equal to the rise time plus the delay time and here after the pulse ends that's the off time of the uh, you know transistor when its collector current just falls off to zero which is comprised or rather comprises of the saturation you know or rather the storage time plus uh, the fall time so this t on and t off represents the time required for the collector current to you know uh, start from zero to uh, the, its maximum value that is vcc by rl and then fall from this, its maximum value to or rather its saturation value up to zero uh, milliamps again so we see here that there are certain time delays involved in which the you know transistor or rather the collector current takes you know uh, certain time to rise and fall so in order to overcome this problem there are certain transistors or other specially designed transistors used for switching purposes termed as switching transistors okay that are used in digital application and certain computer type circuits all right so lastly before summarizing i want to say uh, is that that every transistor has a certain amount of uh, base current tolerating capacity as well as uh, it can tolerate some amount of collector current up to a certain limit so in order to limit those currents uh, in the base and in the collector as well we use the base and the uh, load resistances which acts as current limiters uh, according to the voltage that is being applied across the transistor in order to prevent its burnout okay so these are just protective measures over here they being used so having said that we have i think i've uh, you know summarized all the points that you would require in order uh, for your basic understanding of how a bjt should operate as a switch and you know do it yourself as well so with that we come to the end of our tutorial and meet you in the next tutorial on bjt part 5 okay till then it's goodbye and thank you